Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, March the 5th, and this is the 35th edition of Book Fun Friday. As always, welcome. So the young adult book I'm going to be talking about today, haha, I love this cover, is titled Dragon Hoops, and it's written and illustrated by the author Jean Lewin Yang. Now you can see the cover of the book. It's orange. It's got these stripes. Looks like a basketball, right? If you, I wish you could feel it. It's actually textured, kind of like a bas basketball is textured. Um, you're probably picking up on the fact that this book is about, you got it, basketball. Well, it's about basketball and then some other things as well. So this is actually a memoir, which is really cool. So it's about the author. And I mentioned he's an illustrator. It's not just a memoir, but it's a graphic style memoir as well. So let me tell you a little bit about the author and a little bit about this story. Uh, so the author, and this is right at the beginning of the book, fully confesses he is not a sports guy. He doesn't like watching sports, participating in sports, talking about sports. He is just not into sports at all. Well, it just so happens that um, go, running parallel to his writing and illustrating career as a graphic novelist, he is also teaching at a high school in Oakland, California, and this is back in 2014. Um, and at the time he's teaching there, the men's high school basketball team at his school are really good, and they are on their way to the state championship. Well, in addition to being sort of parallel times in his life, he's a graphic novelist. He's also teaching at the school with this great basketball team. He's sort of hit a slump in his writing career. Um, he's had a couple things published at this point, and he really should be working on his next book, but he's just sort of out of ideas. Well, he picks up that there's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of excitement happening around their basketball team. So he thinks, eh, maybe there's a story there, except remember what I said first. He's not a sports guy, doesn't like talking sports, watching sports, any of that. But he decides that maybe it's worth exploring, even though it's not really something of interest to him. And so he does explore it. And next thing you know, it turns into this big book about the high school basketball team at his school. But it's also interwoven with lots and lots of other things as well. Um, this book is actually a study in... Um, how we behave as people. There's history in here, African American history, women's history. There's a whole back history in there about how basketball itself was created. And all of these stories, these histories, the, the, the story about his, his school's basketball team are interwoven with these histories. Um, and throughout all of this, there's this theme, there's this idea that if we just take a step out of our comfort zone, um, it may turn into something really amazing. He actually illustrates that idea. You guys know the, the saying, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And he actually illustrates that by physically including pictures of shoes every time somebody or some group takes a step toward learning something different, toward making history, toward changing the world for the better. And so you get that as part of the story as well. So it's not just a basketball book. It is a lot about basketball, but it's also really about life. So I'm going to share a couple of passages like I always do. So this first part is in the very, very, very beginning of the book where we get a little bit of, of backstory on the author. Um, he writes, I have hated sports ever since I was a little kid, especially basketball. Basketball games usually started off well enough, but inevitably, and then there's a picture here where somebody has passed the ball and it, it's, he's caught it awkwardly and jammed his fingers, but inevitably, ow, and the pain wouldn't be limited to my jammed fingers. And his friend says, you got to learn how to handle a pass, stick. Side note, my junior high nickname was stick. I used to be really, really skinny. What can I say? I'm just not a sports type of guy. I'm a story 
type of guy. Comic book story specifically. How cool that he grew up to be a graphic novelist. With stories, I know what I'm going to get. Heroes being heroic and villains being villainous. Good, triumphing in the end, and no jammed fingers along the way. In a well-crafted story, everything makes sense, which is more than I can say for sports. After I graduated from college, I began writing and drawing graphic novels. I wanted to tell stories of my own. Around the same time, I also became a high school teacher. This is where I teach, Bishop O'Dowd High School in Oakland, California. So here's the thing about growing up. As you get older, you generally spend less and less time with people who aren't your kind of people. Case in point, our faculty lunchroom. I'm going to show you the picture here. These are the groups in the lunchroom. So there's the, there are the PE teachers and then the drama um, arts teachers and then what he calls uh, the nerdy teachers. Even we teachers tend to stay with our own, where we're most comfortable. But every now and then, something makes you leave that comfort zone. So in 2013, he has a book, a graphic book that's published, and that's great. He's excited. His family is, is happy for him. A year later, in the fall of 2014, I have to start a new graphic novel, but... I'm not sure what I want to write about. Lately, I've overheard a lot of conversation about basketball in the hallways. I'm intrigued, but they're talking about sports. And so he contemplates, maybe there's a story there. And so he decides he's gonna, gonna go meet up with the coach and talk to the coach about the basketball team and maybe get a sense of if there is a story there that he can write. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conclude this section with this part right here. A narrow strip of road runs down the middle of campus. The classroom buildings are on one side. The gym is on the other. I've rarely had to cross it, but I am going to take, and you can see right here, he decides he's going to take a step toward learning about basketball, learning about their team, meeting with the coach and seeing if there's a story there that he can share. Now, I mentioned that he interweaves history into this book as well, and I, I love this. I love that this isn't just a book about his high school basketball team. There's a lot of other stuff that goes along with that as well. <clears throat> and so I'm going to read some of that. In November 1891, at the International Training School of the YMCA in Springfield, Massachusetts, a 30-year-old physical education teacher named James Naismith changed the world. I'm sure you recognize that name. At the time, though, James Naismith just wanted to get through the semester in one piece. So he's teaching at this, this YMCA. He's teaching physical education. He just wants to get through it. That's some teacher facts right there. So the principal stops him and, and says, can you give me a moment to Mr. Naismith? And he says, yes. The principal says, I know you're upset about your new assignment. And James Naismith says, I am. That class has a reputation of being the most incorrigible group in the institution. Two instructors have already tried to engage them, and they both quit. I don't believe I'll do much better. And the principal says, take the class, Mr. Naismith. I want to see what you can do with it. The students in James Naismith's new class were all grown men. It was winter, so physical education had to be indoors. In the 1800s, indoor exercise usually meant calisthenics. And if there was one thing that grown men in the 1800s wouldn't stand for, it was calisthenics, but James Naismith decides to take a step to see what he can do about that. At first, Naismith tried adapting his students' favorite outdoor sports to indoors, like football. 
Hardwood floors were not ideal for tackling, though. He tried lacrosse. Woo, not enough room for bulky equipment. They're hitting each other with it. He tried soccer. Ah, ball goes through the window. None of them worked out. Naismith needed something new, an entirely new sport. There couldn't be any tackling or bulky equipment. That much was obvious. Even having a goal was a problem. To score, the ball had to be launched at incredible speeds, which inevitably led to broken windows. But what if, instead of being upright, the goal was on its side? Then the ball wouldn't be launched, it would be lobbed. It would follow a nice, gentle arc through the air. No more broken windows. <gasps> That's it, he thinks. So this is his step into changing things. The next morning, he asked the superintendent of the school building, the janitor, for two boxes, each big enough to hold a soccer ball. And what the janitor brought him were peach baskets. He says, I'm all out of boxes. Will these do? Yes, they're perfect. He nailed the baskets to the gym's lower railing, one at each end. Then he spent an hour writing out his new game's 13 rules. Good morning, class, he says. I've got a surprise for you. I've invented a brand new game. And the men say among themselves, ugh, I'd rather do calisthenics. Naismith's students listened patiently, though, as he explained the game. I call it basket ball, he said. Side note. In the beginning, basketball was two words, not one. Then the students gave it a try. The first game was very different from basketball as we know it today. There was no dribbling, only passing. <laughs> the players kept forgetting the rules. Ah, they're tackling each other like it's football. Nobody really knew how to shoot. But they figured it out and decided that they wanted to give it another try going forward, so despite the awkward start, by the end of that class period, they were asking to play more. James Naismith knew he had created something special. The sport developed quickly after that. In 1894, a basketball company manufactured the first specialized basketball. In 1898, iron hoops with cord nets replaced the peach baskets. In 1896, dribbling was first used in competition. Eventually, five players became standard, and they solidified into five positions, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power, for power forward, and center. Though it proved enormously popular at YMCA's around the world, early on, basketball had a hard time competing for crowds with the more established sports like football and baseball. But eventually, because it required little equipment and no grass, the game was embraced in urban areas like New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Oakland. And then he takes it back to the story of his high school. All right, again, this wonderful, wonderful book is titled Dragon Hoops, and it's written, by, written and illustrated by the author Jean Lewin Yang. Well, y'all, as always, thank you so much for watching. I, I really appreciate you. Um, I hope you are well and continue to stay well. Take care of yourselves until next Friday when I see you again for the 36th edition of Book Fun Friday. Bye-bye.